Rife with passion. Be passionate about it. Ambitious in pursuit. Our future plan is to be able to expand our territory. She is the woman with a resolve to transform poultry farming in Kenya. Her mission is to take Kijiji poultry beyond the zenith. This week on YouthBase, I meet Selakwech and she shares our endeavor of setting the wheels in motion on Mata's poultry. Kijiji poultry is a family-owned business. It's, uh, we mainly deal with the improved Kenyaji and we are located here in Nandi County, Mosoria to be exact. Uh, this is a farm that started in the year 2017. It's a year old actually and we are basically doing the improved Kenyaji from Kukuchik. That's where we got our parents' stock from and that is where we bought our first batch which is now our parents' stock giving us the eggs that we use to um, hatch. So basically right now we have a population of around 1500 birds. That's inclusive of the chicks and the hens. And what we have specialized in is... Um, we, 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 we have our own fertilized eggs. That's, we have the jogos and the hens. They give us eggs and at the end of the day we hatch them because we have the machines. Seller says the main reason for doing poultry. The main reason we, we are passionate about farming. I say we because as I said earlier it's a family owned business. So we are passionate, my husband and I we are passionate about uh, farming. And we decided to venture into poultry because we've seen um, there's a gap in terms of the, the poultry, the white meat, the eggs, the, the, the Kenyaji egg, people are running away from red meat. And so that gives us a, a market in terms of meat. And this, the, the improved Kenyaji, this one in particular, are dual purpose. That means they, are, they can be kept for eggs and they can be kept for meat. And improved Kenyaji is what makes up Kijiji poultry. This hands, as I said, our, our parents talk, we get them from Kukuchi. Kukuchi is a company in Eldoret that uh, they keep the rainbow rooster. It's a brand. It's, an, it's a brand of one of the improved Kenyajis in Kenya. We have around five improved types, five types of improved Kenyajis in Kenya. And rainbow rooster is one of them, which is based in Eldoret. It's called rainbow rooster because um, they, are, they, they have the, 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 the jogos and the hens, they are multicolored. They don't have one specific. They are not brown layers. They are not the black and white. They have a variety. They have a range of colors. And that, that's where they got the name uh, rainbow rooster from. Equipped with hatching machines, Kijiji poultry has had their focus drawn to selling chicks. From the layers we get the eggs and then there's, there's the, they go to the hatching room. We have a hatcher, we have a capacity of around 1500, that's 1500 eggs. So that means after every 21 days we hatch around 1500 uh, chicks. But it's, it's the, the percentage, it's not 100%, I can assure you that. Uh, so we usually get a total population of around 1200, 1100, 1200. There after every 21 days, but after that 21 days, we we give the machine a period of one week to be able to get. So let's say a monthly turnover of around 1,200 chicks every other month. That's what we did. So we we initially when we started, we our our idea or our thought was to be able to sell them after some time. But due to the challenges in the market in terms of there are so many brokers, so we decided to specialize in selling chicks. And what we do, we hatch. And then we start selling from day old. Our uh, day old, we sell them, we dispose them at 100 bob. And then there are some people who prefer to take two week old. There are people who prefer to take one month. There are people who prefer to take two months. But two months is the maximum that we sell. We, beyond two months, we don't sell. We keep them for, for our stock. In this digital age, seller says that social media has played a huge role in marketing their farm. We have our page which is Kijiji Poultry on Facebook and that's where we've been able to target a lot of farmers. Our, let's, uh, around 80% of our sales actually are through online. We do online marketing and that's what has really helped us as a farm to be able to sell. We get orders from all over the country, different parts and we do deliveries uh, in, uh, according to numbers. And like any other business, it comes with challenges. One of the things that I failed to mention earlier is that um, our chicken are not uh, fully in-house. They are semi, semi range. They go out, they, we feed them and then they feed also. They are able to free range outside. And that is to be able to curb the other challenge which is feeds. Feeds, I can actually say, is quite a cost. It's almost around 70% of poultry farming is feeds. Is, 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 it takes up 
70% of, of the expense. And the other issue is also security. Um, we've had incidences of theft here and there, but we are trying to curb it. So those are the main challenges, that's uh, feed, security, and the market. Kijiji Poultry's future plan is... Our future plan is to be able to package our end products, that is in terms of meat and eggs, and also to be able to expand our territories beyond Nandi County, that is um, to open other branches in different counties and in different towns. In terms of packaging our meat, we want to be able to open our own butchery, that's the white meat chicken butchery, and in various towns, first within Nandi County, and then we'll expand with time. And to the youth. My message to my fellow youth uh, is that nothing is impossible. That I can guarantee. It doesn't. You don't. You don't have to have capital in terms in terms of a huge capital to be able to start something. Even if it means offering your services, find something that you love. Be passionate about it. Even if it means offering your services to someone else in a field that you like, start where you can, and you have to grow. We, and we always don't start big. Start small. Find something. There, there are so many things that we can do as youth. If it's farming, if it's whichever field you think you are good at and you love doing, find it, start it. Don't postpone. Start where you are at that point. The waste from the broilers is very nutritious, hence used as cow feed as well as fertilizer in the farm. This waste is uh, beneficial to the farm. It's, it has got, it's very rich in nitrogen, so when you put it in the farm, then you get a good uh, harvest because of the it's nitrogenous components are quite a lot, quite, quite a big amount of it in the, the, the broiler feces. People also use them for, for animals like cows. When the birds eat, they don't fully digest. So when they pass out out of their feces, you find that there are some nutrition or value that is left to buy. And cows use it and uh, they still produce milk. An average broiler chicken can go for about 380 Kenyan shillings, which is equivalent to $3.7, but also depending on the market available. Generally, the best market starts from when they are five, five weeks, between five weeks and six, six weeks. That's the time you sell them. There are markets that require small bars of about 1.2 dressed weight. There are some markets which require about 1.5 kg dressed weight. So depending on the market you are getting, but we can start selling them anytime from five weeks. It's not always that uh, you sell to a particular person. So we, we cannot say that uh, we have a, a certain customer who buys. We have several of them. It varies. find that uh, those birds at uh, 1.2, uh, between 1.1, 1.2, when you sell them anything from 360 per piece, we are not badly off, but we'd like to we normally like to do around 380, 400. There are people who buy in pieces. There are people who buy in kilos. If you come and sell such a bird for, for a piece, which is, this bird is about 1.7, you cannot sell the same price, this one, with another bigger bird, uh, like, like this one. This is already over two kilos. So those two birds now, you cannot sell them at the same price. So this one we like going, we like selling them now a package. When you, when you go to peace, we, 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 the smaller bird, that's one we can, we, sell, we can sell per piece. And now the per piece, normally we talk of between 1.2 and 1.3, and you can have a flat rate. We normally assume that the pieces are about 1.3 kg, between 1.2 to 1.3. If it goes beyond that, then you sell by kilos. So it much depends on the market. Rearing birds and selling birds, those are two different things. There are people who are very good at producing or rearing the birds, and there are some people who are very good at selling. So depending on what you have yourself as a person, as the farmer, you might find you might lack marketing skills. So in, in such cases, you have to depend on brokers. There are people who come and buy and they go and sell. The quantity also matters. There are somebody who is want to, to buy 100, some want to buy 200, some want to buy 500, some would like to buy the whole lot of 2,000. So it depends on uh, current market, how, how it is, and uh, we have no restrictions. So anybody buying chicks, we are is welcome, as long as the price is right. But we prefer those who can buy in large quantities. There are even some who buy in live birds, so that they go and then slaughter them. There are some who need that you slaughter for them. As you start rearing or you start getting to the broiler market, you should be able to identify where you are going to sell. We also sell to hotels. 
you also sell to individual people. There are also functions, even institutions. We, we, a whole lot, anybody coming to buy, we are very open. Butcheries, functions when there are party, wedding, and all those. Mr. Wandawi has found this a lucrative investment that has kept him occupied. Ever since I've been doing a broiler farming, and um, I don't have any other job, so I wouldn't say it's very bad uh, because I've been surviving on it. And uh, I will still encourage more people to do it uh, because there are quite a number of benefits. One, it keeps you busy. I'm not bored, I am busy and I'm doing it within my home. I feel occupied and I feel I'm doing a duty by uh, producing food for other people. Uh, and besides that, I'm also getting some cash on it. It has helped me in educating my children, although I was still working and by the time I was starting they were almost done. But uh, there, are, there, are, there are one or two who were in college and uh, I used the same money to see them through the college. And uh, I, I would say it's keeping me okay. I'm more quite okay. I'm quite okay. The advice I would give to Braila Farmer is that they get the right chicks because we also have a problem with the chicks. The source. At one time, we find that they, they come here already when they are sick and they experience very high mortality. Get the right feed. So some of the feed manufacturers are not honest, and uh, you get feed that is not uh, appropriate and your birds do not grow. Thirdly, you should have very good personnel who really love the animals, the birds, so that they are able to take care of those birds. Uh, the other one is now. Of course, you have to have a reliable market. You have to find out where to sell your birds when they are ready. And also, you have to have a very good disease control. Disease control is a major problem. If you realize at an early stage when the birds are sick, you can treat them with very little cost. But when you realize when already the disease has set, it becomes very expensive and eventually lose, lose, lose so many birds. So by the end of the day, you lose profits. So it would be better if one could uh, start doing uh, 500 and above. That's when at least you start enjoying the, the business. With a faster growth rate, available market and among its challenges, broiler poultry farming is rapidly evolving into a state-of-the-art business in the nation and abroad. Most of the drugs that we use, they are broad spectrum, so they treat most of the diseases. An inexperienced farmer will have so many disease problems. But as I'm saying, with the time, you come and overcome all these challenges. The other challenge that is there is that uh, the, the, our houses sometimes might not be able to accommodate the number of birds you want to rear. That becomes a challenge because people tend, or we tend it to overcrowd, and then when you overcrowd, then you have disease challenges. That is one of the challenges. Then the other challenge is the feed. Feed is also fairly, fairly expensive. Uh, there are times it becomes a problem because the feed is expensive and then again the market is not uh, good. So you find that are, you are not striking a balance. You spend so much and you sell so little. As a farmer, I also stated that we experience a very big challenge when it comes to marketing because we have problems with uh, chicks coming from outside the country. That is one of our big, big, big challenge. Uh, you find that some countries are rearing those, those birds at very cheap prices. So when they come here in the market, they destabilize us. Most of these countries are doing commercial and they mechanize, mechanize their farming. So eventually it, be, and eventually it becomes cheap for them. Electricity is cheap outside there. So they can produce those chips at a very low price. Even the feed, they are still cheap. So we would urge our government to protect us from these uh, import, uh, imports that come in and they are posing a very big challenge to us. Again, whether it can continue subsidizing the, the feed additives so that uh, the production of feed is a bit cheaper. We also face a very serious challenge from the media houses. They propagate lies. They say that uh, we, we inject uh, uh, these hormones and I don't know what, medicine, chemicals, and this also makes people not eat the birds. So I would ask you people 
to portray the farming in a in a very positive manner so that at least we can get a good market and our people can eat the, the chicken. Otherwise that one is normally also a very big problem. It happens and uh, we normally there is normally no proof, nobody can prove that is happening to the farmer and uh, sometimes the, the, the birds are stigmatized. Even they say we give them ARVs and uh, yeah, really. When that is splashed in the papers or in the newspapers or in the news that week, hakuna mtu atakula kuku. So we really suffer from that. So please, I would urge them to, to report positively so that we promote our the industry. To change this perception, Mr. Wandari's job is to feed the broilers with the right feed, ensure cleanliness and timely vaccination. The rest takes care of itself. In short, the growth of the broilers is very natural.